This week on ANN, Adventist communicators and technologists are heading to Jordan for the 2019 GAIN Conference. We give you an inside look at the last five years of GAIN. And we'll tell you how to be involved in GAIN even if you can't attend the yearly conference. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Right now, communicators and technologists from around the world are in Jordan for the 2019 GAIN Conference. Every year we talk about the GAIN Conference, so today we're talking, we're taking the entire episode to tell you what it is, where it came from, and where those who work closely with it see it going in the future. GAIN, or Global Adventist Internet Network, actually started as G-E-I-N, the Global Evangelist Internet Network. The name was changed to make the conference more accessible to the world. GAIN is more than just a yearly conference. It's a community of people who are involved in technology and communication. Each of these people want to use cutting-edge tools and learn new ways to spread the mission of the Adventist Church to the world. We sat down with members from the communication department at the Adventist Church's World Headquarters in Silver Spring to talk about their vision for GAIN. GAIN is a point of conversions. Every year, people from the church come and analyze everything that is happening and try to apply those new technologies to spread the good news of salvation. We have thousands of Adventist communicators who work in radio and television and conferences, unions, and the opportunity they have to come together, rub shoulders together, see what's new is gain. That's where the, the personal interactions happen from people from all over the world that are trying to solve the same problems and communicate the mission of the church. We hope and pray that people can be inspired to use new technology to share the gospel. And the main purpose of GAIN is to train, to inspire, to instruct, to motivate. We already have over a hundred regional GAIN conferences. This is when local fields bring together communicators and the people who are interested in using communication for mission, local events, and we hope this will increase. Also, we will take material from previous GAIN events along with new articles to help people and educate them and inspire them um, so that they can use technology and communication to achieve the mission of the church. And we hope and pray that all of these assets can be easily accessible to people. So in doing that, the new generations can be inspired and motivated to use technology for the mission of the church. And you can find all of this at gain.adventist.org. Coming up, we have an inside view of some of the past GAIN conferences. We'll be right back after the break. It was around noon when Peter went up to the roof to pray. It was here that Peter had a vision about a large sheep containing a mix of unclean animals, representing God's affirmation of the diversity of peoples in the growing church. We had heard that Peter was staying at the house of Simon the Tanner and were instructed by Cornelius the Centurion to go out and find him. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Holy Spirit told him to go downstairs because three men were looking for him. Peter went down and told the men that he was the one they were looking for. We then told Peter that Cornelius the centurion had been told by an angel that Peter would come and see him at his house. So, unbeknown to Peter, Cornelius was already expecting his visit to Caesarea. What happened here was quite unusual, just the fact that Peter entered the house. Remember that it was against the law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. Cornelius told Peter how three days earlier he had been praying in his house 
when an angel had appeared before him. Peter shared with Cornelius his new understanding that God does not show favoritism and is the Lord of all. This was a real turning point. From this point on, the gospel was also given among other people groups, and it all started out with prayer and fasting and a vision. Welcome back. In 2015, GAIN was held online. The conference was live at three different times during the day and in four simultaneous languages. Participants were able to come online, watch presentations, and ask questions to the presenters and other experts. Here's a quick peek at GAIN online. The Seventh-day Adventist Church held its annual Internet and Communication Conference, which explores new ways of using technology to share the gospel. The five-day Global Adventist Internet Network Conference, or GAIN, featured presentations that ranged from cybersecurity and app development to virtual currency and operating an information technology department on a budget. Several presenters highlighted the popularity and effectiveness of developing games for education and ministry. Another talk focused on the emergence of multi-site churches, which share worship services via video conferencing. One presenter illustrated how mapping techniques can best allocate mission resources within a town or throughout an entire country. Also during the conference, leaders from the church's North American region announced a distance learning portal that will go live in March. This year's conference for the first time was held online and drew thousands of participants from 106 countries. In 2016, GAIN was held at the General Conference World Headquarters in Silver Spring, located in the U.S. state of Maryland. The theme, Telling Our Story in a Rapidly Changing World, was emphasized during special keynotes and presentations. Here is our report from GAIN 2016. Adventist communication leaders, media experts, journalists, ministry leaders, and educators shared various ways the church can use the best practices to advance its mission. More than 250 communicators and technology experts exchanged these ideas during a five-day GAIN conference at the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the U.S. state of Maryland. The numerous presentations given during the 12th GAIN conference centered on the theme, Telling Our Story in a Rapidly Changing World. Attendees learned about maintaining a paperless office, using data to reach big cities, reaching the maximum amount of web users with excellent design, hearing from a Microsoft engineer about product collaboration, understanding copyright laws, creating virtual reality videos, and communicating in times of crisis. The conference also featured dynamic keynote presentations. GAIN 2016 kicked off with a message from Gary Kraus from Adventist Mission, who spoke about the role communication plays in sharing the holistic, life-changing message of the gospel, specifically in urban areas. On the conference's second day, representatives from Life Academy, an initiative for evangelism and discipleship, shared their plans to create interactive online programs to reach young adults. Gerson Pinto, Felipe Rodriguez, Ricardo Devay share they are currently in the process of creating an online ecosystem that will change the way people in South America experience the message of the Adventist Church. During the conference's third day, attendees heard two keynote presentations. The first keynote was delivered by representatives from the Seventh-day Adventist Church's media center in the inter-European region. Klaus Papa, Paul and Georgi shared their Impact 2020 strategy that uses creative means to support the denomination's total member involvement initiative. The final keynote presentation was given by Joanne Davison, who is a professor of theology at Andrews University in the U.S. state of Michigan. Davison talked about God as an artist and how he used art to communicate his love and character throughout the Bible. An added feature to gain was Project SLAM, which allowed various communication leaders and innovators to share their projects in seven minutes. 
This allowed for more attendees who didn't give full 25-minute presentations to have the opportunity to share their ministries and projects with their global colleagues. During Gain Sabbath School program, attendees heard mission stories from representatives from the Adventist Church in China. Daniel Zhao and Zhao Ru shared their various projects and initiatives to reach the vast population in China with the gospel message. They were also presented with a net award for their great achievements in the nation of China in spite of the numerous religious liberty challenges imposed by the nation's government. The final event of the GAME conference was the world premiere of the film Opposites of the Same Story. The film was a project from Brazil Adventist University that shared the story of a man who overcame obstacles including an abusive father, homelessness, and lack of education to go on to make a major contribution to his society. The main character of the film also attended the premiere. Organizers of the conference hoped attendees were inspired by the wide variety of content and presentations to reach the world with the Adventist message. In 2017, the GAIN attendees headed to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Held at UNASP, or the Adventist University of Brazil's Campus 2 in Ejineiro, Coelho, it was the largest GAIN yet. More than 800 participants and students came to listen to presentations about mission and technology. Sao Paulo in Brazil was the venue for this year's Global Adventist Internet Network Summit, affectionately known as GAIN. Hundreds of communicators conveyed at the magnificent UNASP University campus to attend this prestigious showcase for all Adventist IT, media and communication directors. The event was well attended with more than double the expected numbers, but the organizers were on the ball to cater for the unexpected numbers. Running under the theme Wired for Mission, the summit drew participants from across our 13 divisions and the organizers put up together a show that catered for all from missions, technology to evangelism and on how we can collaborate in harnessing technology to further the gospel. The presentation on how to reach the unentered areas or the 1040 window, especially among the Muslim community, was very informative. The participants were humbled to see the image of the first call porter and the wonderful work of our literature evangelists in using the printed page as a tool of winning souls for Christ. The game participants were blown away by the massive printing equipment and the many number of books and publications being printed in order to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the publishing company, the participants visited the broadcasting pace setters of the world in Novo Tempo just to rub shoulders and to learn more about broadcasting trends. With a staff complement of almost 500 workers, Novo Tempo is an envy for many aspiring broadcasters and the visitors were tongue-tied to witness not just the facilities but also the professionalism at Novo Tempo. Pastor Samuel Neves, the Associate Director for Communication at the General Conference, presented a paper on branding and identity, and he feels that now is the time for the World Church to speak with one voice, hence this year's theme, Wired for Mission. After Brazil, the GAIN Conference went to Seoul, Korea in 2018. And this time, the participants partnered with the Northern Pacific Division's Mission Congress. Communicators and technologists were able to hear amazing presentations during the day and then in the evening join thousands of people every night to watch spectacular mission programs.
That just about wraps up our game coverage. Next year, game will be online again, so if you'd like to participate, visit game.adventist.org. Coming up, Emily Mastrapa has an easy way for you to join the game conversation between the conference. But up next, Adventist Mission has an inspiring story of an addict turned doctor from Moldova. Have you ever been to a concert or a sporting event? Or really anywhere where people gather for one purpose? When they come together, especially for the same reason, often something amazing happens. At the apex of the gathering, be it a touchdown or a concerto, or a political gathering or what have you, people stand up and they begin to clap and they cheer and it's beautiful to watch. To see so many people gathered for the same reason. But sometimes, something else happens as well. Sometimes, the clapping moves from just random noise to a very clear and undeniable cadence. The clapping moves from disunity to unity. And rooms, arenas, stadiums are brought together in a deep sense of unity towards the same mission, the same goal. That unity, it comes from a deep sense of gratitude and it's spontaneous in its inception. It just happens and it's clear in its mission. Such is the idea of unity from diversity. And this is a deeply biblical concept. The church is unified as it is the body of Christ. Not the same, we're not all hands or feet or eyes, but some of us are the guts, the thighs, and the toes of the body of Christ. But we are brought together for a mission, and that mission is to live in gratitude, to know that we are saved. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. May I work in with you, young fella? Yeah. Go for it. That's the way you do it. Got to put a little weight on it. But well, I'll put it back up here for you. Well, one of the areas uh, in children that's been the most gratifying to me is the blind kids. And these children are children that have full trust. When we built our first uh, blind school in Bobley, we took several of the kids from children to have them examinated to see if they could have the transplant. And I'll never forget the little girl. And Dorothy Watts asked her, what do you want to see when, if your operation is successful? And she said, well, I felt a cat, I petted a cow, I want to see Jesus. And when she was told that her operation couldn't be successful, she said, well, it's okay, I'll see him in heaven. Welcome back. Vyacheslav went from being an addict to a doctor. His life was changed and now he works to share Jesus with the people in Moldova's capital city. Adventist Mission has more. This building used to be a noisy bar. But then the Adventist Church had kingdom focus plans for it. The bar has since been transformed into an urban center of influence, or UCI, in the heart of Moldova's capital city, Chisinau. Your generous giving to Global Mission helps support this UCI, which offers life-changing opportunities to the community. The bar had been disruptive to the neighborhood atmosphere, but today the community members appreciate the holistic programs and medical services available here and get involved regularly. 
At the front of the building, you'll find volunteers distributing and selling books on health and spirituality. They greet passers-by and welcome them to join a variety of classes and events throughout the week. Most of the volunteers are from different religious backgrounds, but they fully believe in the work the local Adventists are doing in this neighborhood. Some days they even walk around to the nearby apartment buildings, inviting the residents to join the week's programs. Today, Global Mission pioneer Svetlana is conducting an exercise class outside. People are constantly coming by to enjoy the center's many different activities, such as natural cosmetics on Sundays and singing groups on Thursdays. After stretching and exercising, visitors make their way inside to join another group learning about healthy eating. They taste different foods and talk about the benefits of a balanced diet. As they learn, they also have a chance to befriend others who live in the area. During the day, this building also operates as a doctor's office and a dental clinic. Vyacheslav is the medical doctor serving this office. When he was younger, he was addicted to drugs, and nobody believed he had any potential. But one day, he met an Adventist who wanted to be his friend. This new friend made Vyacheslav feel cared for and encouraged him to read the Bible. Taking his friend's advice, Vyacheslav sat in the corner of a bar night after night and read the Bible. He enjoyed the stories, and over time he realized he didn't want that lifestyle anymore. Vyacheslav accepted Jesus in his heart and began to attend medical school. Despite many challenges, he passed at the top of his class and now works in the Global Mission Urban Center of Influence during the week. On Sabbath, he is also the church pastor. Vyacheslav frequently invites his patients to take part in the center's activities, including the regular Bible studies, and many of them do. Some visitors who come for the center's other programs also want to come back to learn about the Bible. Because of Svetlana's and Vyacheslav's efforts, the dedication of the center's staff and volunteers, and your support, the church's congregation has grown. Church members in Moldova thank you for supporting Global Mission. Please continue to pray for and give to Global Mission projects like these. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. Throughout this program, you've heard and seen all about the GAIN conferences. Now Emily Mastrepa is here to tell you how you can get involved, even if you can't attend the annual conference. Even if you can't attend GAIN conference in person, you can still get involved with the GAIN community by using Slack. The GAIN Slack community is a place to exchange ideas and seek help for topics on communication and technology. It's a global online community for people to connect throughout the whole year. You can easily join Slack by visiting gaintalk.slack.com. If you have trouble joining, you can reach out to the GAIN team by emailing gainconf at gmail.com. Once you join the GAIN Slack workplace, you can join different channels and get in touch with people all over the world. There's even a special channel just for introductions so you can let everyone know who you are. And you can easily direct message people for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Slack is a great hub for collaboration no matter what, your work, what work you do. It's a place where conversations happen, decisions are made, and information is always at your fingertips. Join the GAIN Slack channel community to stay better connected. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On February 17, 1882, George Drew, a literature evangelist working in England, wrote to the Signs of the Times, reporting on his progress with selling Seventh-day Adventist books and papers. Drew had been born in Christchurch, Hampshire, England, on October 14, 1835, and he became a sailor. While in port at San Francisco, California, in the United States of America, Drew heard J.N. Loughborough speak and, quote, at once accepted the truth. He spent seven years in California doing missionary work and learning as much as he could about the Advent message. In 1882, Drew accompanied Loughborough and A.A. A. John as they embarked on taking the message to what is now the United Kingdom. Drew took up work as a ship missionary, spending time in Southampton and Liverpool, going from ship to ship, 
in his mission to reach fellow sailors. He did this work for over 20 years, getting Adventist literature onto outgoing ships and, as a colleague wrote later, thus scattering our literature in every part of the world. Drew died October 25, 1905, and was buried in his hometown in the county of Hampshire. Today, the South England Conference, which includes Drew's hometown, has 160 churches and a membership of a little over 25,000. That came from this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh day Adventist Church. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. Be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos, then write up a summary of the event's important details, and feel free to send full video reports as well. You can reach us by sending an email to annvideo11 at gmail.com. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. The passage says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, no height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.